Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is kind of a special video for building products with JavaScript because I want to talk separately about the new version of Docker, some new things it has, and how we can use it to make our Node Docker images better and smaller and faster. So, uh, as you might or might not know, the Docker 1706 has recently been released. I believe, yeah, here you can see the date, it was June 28. Uh, so it's been quite a few days now. Um, and uh, among other pretty cool features, it introduces one like super major thing that is called multi-stage builds that is essentially allows you to combine multiple Docker files into one. So uh, it's their official docs uh, state usually, you know, before you, used to have multiple Docker files that one would build the thing and the other one would actually package it and run it to have a smaller runtime footprint uh, in terms of uh, image size. And, you know, building that was kind of a pain in the ass, honestly, you know, you had to like run several Docker instances then copy the files around and it, it was a pain. So now multi-stage uh, builds allow you actually to do all of that in one file. You might think, you know, for Node.js, we just, do npm install or yarn install and that's it right so that's that's all we actually do but there is another tool that is quite relevant to this that is called uh, pkg from site guys that allows you to take all your uh, node.js source code and package it into one binary that is going to be built for a specific platform obviously it's going to be bundled together with node.js uh, but most of all, it's going to be just one tiny, bi I mean, okay, not tiny, but one binary that is smaller than whatever is your node uh, modules folder is, you know, because you don't really use all the stuff that is in there. So here I have an um, example application that is essentially just an express server. So it just has Express.js and, you know, it says hello world and that's it. That's all it does. And then I have a multi-stage build file. So as you can see here on step one, what I do is I pull in the Node.js uh, container official one, I copy and install the package, and then I run this yarn package thing uh, that is defined here. And as you can see here, this is exactly package build, which compiles the binary for Node Alpine, for Alpine Linux and outputs it as an uh, app binary. So, uh, I mean, I can actually run it here right now. Uh, the only problem is that I won't be able to run it because it's gonna be compiled for Alpine, but you will actually see that if I list it, we have this app now here and it's just 35 megs. So it's tiny. And this is including Node.js Node inside of it, right? So then the second step, as you can see here, I do from again, but this time from Alpine, this is our base image. It, I mean, if you don't know, Alpine Linux is like the tiniest Linux out there and uh, it works pretty well for creating a small um, Docker images. Uh, what I do is I create a board here again. I set the node environment to production. I install some required libs that are not in there by default that actually node requires. So if you don't install this, your app won't work. And then I copy our pre-built app from previous step right here. And that's all we have to do. So if you actually, uh, um, I mean, we can, um, yeah, basically the normal node image is pretty heavy. So if we take images and find node here, you will see that the image itself is like 600 megs. But if we actually build this one, uh, so let's call it uh, multi-test for example, right? Um, we'll t test. So if I build this, you'll see that it obviously takes some time, you know, it's gonna run install and it's gonna copy stuff around. But the advantage is Docker does everything for you. So imagine you could actually run a unit test before that in another step. And if that step fails, it won't continue, it will just drop off. So you can replace basically your whole continuous integration pipeline with that, as long as you have access to Docker logs. Uh, but once this is built, you will see that the resulting image size is going to be around 50 megabytes and it is tiny and you know, it's pretty fast to build. And uh, interesting thing is that the package guys actually claim that uh, building apps and running it with them uh, makes it faster. I believe it was, yeah, version four application boot up is around 20% faster in package state than just using node. So it's actually better for you to do that because they run some optimizations. All right. So we got our uh, multi-test, multi-test. There we go. And as you can see, it's just 43 megabytes. So overhead is super small with this. 
Now you might be thinking, yeah, you know, this is just an ExpressJS app. There's not much going on. You just have one file. I mean, how much difference can it make? Well, I mean, let us have a look at our um, building products with JS server that we built in the previous course, right? So we have this pretty complex app that includes a ton of dependencies. Like if we have a look here, you can see that there's like Babel and Dev dependencies. There is some body parser, Morgan, Thinky, Winston, whatever. There's a ton of them, right? And uh, I will close this. And if we um, if we look at the images, so uh, wait a second. It was what hub docker com our Yamalite BPUJS server. I think it is around like 600 megs as well. So I don't remember if we can actually um, have a look somewhere here. There we go. So it is uh, 304 megabytes and then I don't think it counts the, um, I don't think it counts the base image. So if we do get, uh, no, sorry, Docker images, grab this one, right? So there you go. It is 768 megabytes. So it is quite big. Now, what I did here is I created another Docker file that does exactly the same that we did before. Uh, so it does the package with um, package, but in this case, I needed some additional tweaks. Uh, first of all, because uh, we need to pre-compile it because we run Babel by default and package doesn't understand Babel. And then I needed to add scripts and assets uh, for thinking and rethink db dash because they don't really seem to compile well because they used like relative and dear name and um, other bolloxy path that I'm not even sure why, but hey, basically this configuration solves it. It's all in the um, package docs. So if, if like if you wanna package your project, just go through the docs. There's not much of them. They're pretty straightforward. And you know, this is exactly what I'm talking about. It works fine. Okay, so, and I created a, again, Docker file, which is again, more or less the same. So if we build this, um, so I'm gonna say, yeah, so we're gonna build with a Docker file package and we're gonna call it BPVGS server. I'm gonna build this bit. So as you can see here, again, it's gonna take some time to actually run through. Obviously this one's gonna take longer because it has to pull more um, yarn dependencies since we do have quite a bit here. But once it's finished, you're gonna see that the resulting image size is, I think it was about 10 times smaller than the original node image that we used. So there is a significant gain in uh, size. And I mean, if it executes faster on, on start, then hey, it's even more advantageous. But this is basically my new way of building every each and every image that I do for like server side and uh, actually command line details because you know, not everyone has NPM installed globally and NPM I minus G is a nice way of getting command line tools. But if someone doesn't have it, then uh, using package to compile the binary to, uh, I'm sorry, compile your command line tool into one binary is a great way of sharing it with people who might not have node installed. It is 30 megs or 40 megs after all, but you know, it's better than pulling like installing node, installing NPM and then doing NPM minus G and pulling billions of dependencies and tons of files. So definitely a win-win situation over here. All right, there we go. Uh, what is going on? I got some, is my internet being wonky again? That happened last time. That just seems to be okay, come on. All right, there we go, it finally builds it. So as you can see, there's a bunch of warnings because I think it doesn't work well with this or thing to be dash and uh, thinky libraries that do this relative strange requires, uh, but it builds and with assets, it seems to copy all the required files. So this image works. I won't show it to you now because it's a pain in the ass to start all of this up, but I tried it, it works, believe me. <laughs> uh, and if we actually uh, search for BPVGS server now, you can see that the new image is just 70 megabytes, which is even more than 10 times smaller than the our original image. So there you go. That's a very nice way of uh, doing things. Um, I think I am gonna publish this like basic example as a um, repo somewhere, and I'm gonna link it in the video description so that you can have a look at the Docker file and have a look at how exactly it works. Uh, so that, you know, it will be easier for you to follow this rather than reading the source from screen, which is never good. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's actually all I wanted to say. 
So this was the way to build super tiny images for Node.js projects using Docker multistage builds. Uh, they are only available in Docker 17.06 and later. And package, which is a side project, which is great. So if you, you, know, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Definitely really good stuff there. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. And as always, I see you next time. Bye.